Australia's armed forces are known around the world as the very best. They're hardworking, versatile, resilient, and committed to helping our community with everything they've got. We make sure they've got the best equipment, the best training and cutting edge research and technology to help them to serve at an elite level. But for so many of our veterans, getting the help they need is a struggle. That's where Propatria steps in. It's a grassroots community of professionals right here in the Riverina, providing world-class care for veterans, first responders and their families, led by people who know what it's all about, people who've been there, people like Jason Frost. I served 16 years in the Australian Army. Medically retired in 2015, so when I got out, I got out with a few chronic conditions. Um, pain probably being my number one ailment at the time, and for a fair while there, toward the end of my career, I started taking normal medicine for pain, which was anti-inflammatories and uh, Panadol at the time. Um, on discharge, I was, again, as those drugs kind of wear off, pain seeps through, plus other issues I was diagnosed with was um, chronic depressive disorder, uh, PTSD, adjustment disorder. So before I actually moved down here, I'd, when I discharged, I'd started a business in Sydney as well, because again, I needed to, something to do once I'd got out. Um, that business was pretty successful um, at the start, which was good. However, again, my ailments started to show through. I couldn't physically stand for too long. I was diagnosed with um, spondylosis, uh, degenerative disc disease, uh, plus a, a sciatica and some bulge discs. But what I didn't realise at the time was, um, and again, looking at the paperwork now, it makes sense. I'd actually, um, when I joined the military, I joined at 178 centimetres and by the time I'd uh, finished my career at 35, I was down to 174 centimetres. So I dropped four centimetres in height just from, again, the physical activities and a lot of impacts and things that we kind of went through in the, the roles that I was doing. Every time that I'd go back and say, hey, this isn't working, I'm having these other effects, I'd just end up with another but drug to add to my bag that I'd get once a month from the chemist. The first time I was truly suicidal was when I was on all the meds and when the meds were failing to work and when I'd get to that black zone, that, that place where the pain absolutely takes over, there is no rational thought in your brain that you can access in that mode at any moment. And again, I'll go back to the doctor and they go, oh, you must be genetic. But the team of world-class medical professionals at Propatria know that there are better ways. This uh, uh, approved uh, and we're ready to, uh, to talk about your furniture fittings yep. and all the things that you need to, uh, to, to move in. So my name is uh, Dr Jim Reid. I am a rural GP with a lot of experience in more holistic or integrated health. I used to be the Vice President of Australasian College of Nutritional and Environmental Medicine. Today we're at the Propatria Centre which is an inspirational um, new uh, organisation or centre for veterans and first responders. I'm hoping to head up to Sydney where I've got a whole lot of medical furniture that I should be able to um, certainly beds and those sorts of things. If there are some tables that might be useful and like a desk in the meantime. This... Now we've left this desk here. Yeah. As a soldier, you're part of a team. You're, you're fighting for the guy next to you, not just for your country. And you know, if you get discharged, you know, particularly for medical reasons and you're disconnected from that, then people's sense of meaning and purpose is lost. Their sense of connection is lost. And what we're really trying to create here is a, is a place where that connection happens again and that's connection with one another where people can share some of their journey and help to heal. Uh, and then also where they can be connected to multiple services in one place. So people who are very isolated uh, at the moment where they can come to one location and have multiple people who 
uh, not just provide services for them, but have a greater understanding of the nuances of their particular needs. And my name's Dr. Ted Cassidy. I'm a, I'm a psychiatrist. I'm one of the co-founders of the Monarch Mental Health Group. From a veteran community point of view, the rates of mental health issues are really high. And, and I think one of the things that I always think of is this is not a vulnerable group of people because the selection process to be a veteran, to be in the army or the, the ADF or, the, or to be a first officer are actually really high. We're actually taking the most resilient people. We're then exposing them to super normal uh, uh, levels of trauma. And then, you know, it's quite natural that there's a, there's a level of kind of mental health distress that comes as, as a result of that. So being part of Propatria, when I heard about this organisation, when I heard that it was going to be care focused on the veteran community in Wagga, um, which has a big sort of ADF population, an ex-ADF population, I, I thought this is something we want to be part of. But this care is not reserved just for our veterans. Beyond the Badge co-founder, Sean Harron, says that this care is sorely needed by our first responders. Some of our participants are doing okay in terms of not too much baggage uh, and they can secure reasonable jobs. M many others are really struggling to the point where you know, we've had people who've come on the program who six months prior were, were sitting in the gutter outside their home with their service pistol, uh, thinking about, you know, taking their life. Um, that, that's, you know, that's probably the lowest, you know, in terms of stories that we have. But there's many more who have just been simply struggling, sitting on their lounge for six or seven years, and it's a terrible downward spiral. As devastating as this situation is, Riverina Bluebell's Darren Sweeney sees the services ProPatria provides helping the whole region deal with the mental health crisis facing Australia. In the region at the moment, we are struggling. We have four to five month lead times on psychiatrists. We, our resources are full to the brim and we are unfortunately not being able to look after our community. We have a real problem here and we have a real opportunity to be able to help this system. Propatry is quickly becoming more than just a healthcare facility. It's a community and it's growing. So the Propatria really started from Defence Shed. That really enabled us to get a membership of the community and start to find out some of the shortfalls that were happening. So we did our first survey, managed to get feedback from around 30 local veterans. Um, that showed the need for, again, confirming the need that we'd already identified, but showing the data for it. Um, the need for some medical services to be local here, because a lot of guys, if they have a medical need, they have to go to the major cities to actually access that. When we're looking for somewhere permanent for the defence shed, because at the moment we're up with the salvos there and they've been great, had us there for nearly three years now, but they're going to need their space back eventually. We got introduced to the uh, Carmelite Sisters out at um, Ashmont. They found out what we were trying to do. The historical significance of Ashmont and that, that monastery there too was quite substantial with what we were looking to achieve um, for a place for veterans and first responders. The monastery itself was established for veterans. Their new home means that Propatria can provide over 4,800 veterans and first responders in the Riverina with the support they need. But it's not just them this will help, it's their families. I first became involved with Propatria when I was desperately seeking help for my son who was having trouble and I didn't know where to go. When he returned to Wagga with the Navy, he changed jobs, he left the Navy, he started to work for civilians and didn't get to work one day. And he had put my phone number down as a contact point with his new job, which was fortunate because they phoned me to find out where he was. And I said, well, I don't know, I mean, I... <laughs> and so I went looking and that was the first I knew that he had any type of problem because he'd been overseas on deployments. Uh, and if you can imagine living on board a ship and he lost a couple of mates um, in accidents, etc. during the periods. He went to Calvary Drug and Alcohol and the doctor that was on duty there said, oh, the really good place for you is in Sydney. I'll refer you down there. So he went down there and he has probably been there 12 times in the last two and a half years. Well, my name's Suzanne. Um, my son Christopher was in the Australian Army. 
Um, he joined soon after he was 17, signed up, did his training at Kapuka, um, then was transferred to Holsworthy in Sydney, um, served in Timor, then he went to three tours of Afghanistan. The first one, he was regular army. The second two, he was special forces. Um, he was a medic for the special forces. He went for six and a half months at a time and um, he came back broken. Mm. My name's Wendy and I'm um, Brad Fuson's mother-in-law, Laura's mother. Um, Brad's quite well known in Wagga because uh, we've done tried to do a lot of uh, fundraising for Brad to get the um, HBOT treatment. He spent 20 years in the army, a lot, a lot of um, TBIs, which has caused a lot of other major complex health issues with him. Yeah, you know me, I'm a, a huge advocate for lessons and their rights. The, the system is letting them down. Like, Laura hasn't had carers at all the whole time she's been away this last time up the Gold Coast, uh, 10 weeks. Um, because he'd regressed so badly in between getting this treatment that, that had been withheld for some time. Um, he, doesn't, he doesn't get out of bed easily. He needs that assistance. He, and sometimes he just can't get out at all. Five times so far the, uh, the treatment has been discontinued. And five times we've had to tell their children, my grandsons, um, that this could be it. This dad might not come out of this one. Chris has lost enough friends, enough mates, through suicide. Um, he was an elite team of 14 that was selected out of 100 that tried out special forces. 14 were selected. Eight of them have committed suicide. Um, he's been to too many funerals and I don't want to go to his. In desperation one day I rang the defence shed phone number and I got Jason and I was talking to him and that was where my involvement started with ProPatria and Jason because he has been so wonderful. But ProPatria wasn't always there to help. Without access to the cutting edge treatments that Jason needed, he and his healthcare team were forced to take extraordinary measures. It was actually I'd seen my psych, my psychiatrist in um, in Sydney, and he was watching me fall apart after I'd left the fence, and he literally slid a card across the table to me to, and said, "I can't condone this, but you should look these guys up." And that was a card for Weeded Warrior, and I got introduced to Michael Harding, who was one of the founders of Weeded Warrior. He went over to the US, studied with the guys over there, learned a lot from Sue Sisley and a lot of the, the lead experts, the professors that were studying medicinal cannabis for PTSD and for veterans. He brought that knowledge back. But looking into the research, my desperation took over and I was like, at any cost, I was gonna try something that was gonna stop putting my family at the risk that I was putting them at. And then, like my first experience of it, I literally had the source at illegally in the middle of the night it was about 11 o'clock at night I asked the first guy I could see if he could get us some some marijuana and I snuck upstairs paranoid as hell that the uh, missus had found out at the time snuck in a bed and I slept for six hours for the first time in probably I don't know five six years I think since I'd slept like that and my eyes opened and I actually felt clear-headed for the first time and since I could remember we need to listen to our veterans. We need to listen to our first responders so we can do the research on what they're already telling us. And they're telling us that things like psychedelic medication is working for people who are otherwise gonna commit suicide and it's saving their lives. That requires research. You know, what will we be doing here at, uh, at ProPatria? We'll be, we'll be offering transcranial magnetic stimulation therapy. Uh, to veterans. Uh, this is something that's supported by Medicare, supported by the DVA. We'll be offering access to esketamine nasal spray. Esketamine is the only medication that's been licensed for, uh, for treatment-resistant depression. We've already been offered uh, 
relationships with universities in the US, universities in Israel, um, exchange programs. This gives us the opportunity to send people over and send medical professionals over, send university students over and learn what's happening in these other uh, countries as well, and bring some of that medical best practice back to Australia. Best practices like hyperbaric air therapy, the life-changing treatment that Brad Fusen can only receive if he travels to a major city. What were you just saying to Daddy? I love you. Yeah. I love you, Daddy. We didn't know if the treatment was going to work or how well it was going to work, and we always knew it probably wasn't going to be a cure. But from the very first day, when he, when Brad got before Brad got into that chamber, he was in a wheelchair, basically, basically in a wheelchair or on a walker. I love you too, sweetheart. And I was there and I witnessed it. It was just beautiful. He got into the chamber for an hour and a half, the sessions are. He got out and he walked unassisted. He was still, you know, like after one session, it was, you know, it wasn't 100%, but he walked unassisted. Good morning, mate. Good morning. Good to see you. Good to see you. Like within a week of doing that, he was unbelievable. You couldn't believe it was a different man. We went to the park. He ran with his little three-year-old son for the first time ever. And he was playing and giggling and they all, but it was just, it was such a beautiful moment. It's the home of the soldier. We've got, and not every veteran's broken. But at the moment, we have a few that are, and we have an opportunity to help them. So this is a real stepping stone for something that's gonna be really great to fill that hole that we've got in, in mental health. And especially for us here in regional New South Wales. And the best part is it's not in years, this is in months. We, we should be supporting Great Patria. First of all, because it is a grassroots veteran uh, initiative. We should also be supporting Great Patria because we've placed our veterans in, and first responders in the line of fire. We, you know, as these are resilient, strong individuals, stronger than the average, and we've damaged them by, in, in the service of us, really. So I think we as a community owe our veterans and first responders the opportunity to get well in a, a place like this. If they supported our country, we now need to support them. The Carmelite Order have offered this monastery and its beautiful grounds for a quarter of the retail price. Great deal, but that's still $1.5 million that we don't have. That's where you can come in. Propatria have already made an obligation to these veterans and first responders and their families. So dig deep, make a donation. Go to propatriatrust.org. This is a call to action. We really do need your help.